The preparation of Pesach was one month, two months before. We used to paint the house every single year. The whole house had to be painted. And the carpet used to be all out, washed, clean. And the rise has to be checked three times. Check it by hand. And we used to, my mother used to put us all around the table. Each one has to pick a little bit. We had to help. There wasn't such a thing, no help. It doesn't exist. We used to help. It has to be cleaned three times, the rice. And then um, minced. We didn't have a magic mix. It was all done by hand. Ta, 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 ta. And make it as a powder. And from that, we make dough to make kibbe for Pesach because we didn't have wheat. And we made everything else from that, from the rice. You know, the Pesach cleaning, we did it very, uh, very seriously then. Uh, I even remember sometimes they would scrub eggs and then they have the excitement of ordering the matzah, which, is, which was baked especially for you. You go to the synagogues where the, those who bakers are there or the ovens are there and you order for you. So they, it's baked for you, you'd like it a little bit uh, uh, more harder or softer. My grandfather started the business, the printing business and uh, 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 printing Hebrew books. And this is the Haggadah my grandfather printed in his printing house which was in Hebrew and translated in Arabic but Hebrew letters. We used to, uh, on Pesach night, my father had a very good voice and he used to sing uh, all the songs and uh, we used to enjoy the whole evening but uh, it went on and on and uh, we were by the time was Afyakuman, you know, um, we were all asleep under the table. <laughs> when they used to cut the Afyakuman in the beginning of the prayer, after the little brachot, they used to cut the Afyakuman and the piece that you hide, right? There's one that you hide and the other piece, they, we used to put it in a piece of cloth, hold it in the corners and put it around our shoulder and we used to say what was the prayer uh, and the, all of us tell us where are you coming from we used to say we come from Syria from Lebanon or whatever and we tell them so where are you going to we're going to Eres Israel and we used to do this and bring it back that was a symbol that when Bnei Israel left Egypt they had no money, they had nothing. So all their stuff, they put it in a cloth, put it around their shoulder and went out from Egypt. You know, in a part of the Passover, one of the songs in Egypt, they do it with the sound of the Aida because the Aida opera was inaugurated in Egypt, in Cairo. Her father, pure Ashkenazi, he sings it with Aida. Kadesh Urchatz Karpas Yeah, exactly. <laughs> presumably you were doing that in Egypt at the same time. Yeah, day. yeah. And well, you, how would you know it? No, you taught us. us. Yeah. And I remember, for example, I had a particular Pesach cup for, for the Kiddush that has been there for generations. And it was given to me because I was the Bechor. So when I was born, it was uh, the first kid in, in, a, in a tribe. So I get this silver cup that has passed from generation to generation. And, uh, so I look forward to, to receiving it every Pesach before the Seder. And we sit there and, uh, and we do the Seder. And uh, wonderful memories, Pesach. The prayers were a bit different. And uh, there was a... Iraqi Haggadah, where part of the singing was in Arabic. Uh, and, uh, and I've been trying to see if there is the same passages in, in, in present Haggadahs, and there isn't. Uh, something to do with the uh, ritual sacrifice of uh, uh, lamb uh, and killing of, of the lamb. And one used to sing, 
כולו דבח אל פס, דבח אל פס, לא אללה, לא 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 which we used to have in Algeria. It's uh, still made in Aja. It's not produced, it's not sold in this country, in England. It's not sold in Israel. It's only sold in France. And um, I go and get it every year. That's all we had. We didn't have the flat, the small one, the thin one. It is a different taste. It's certainly harder. We put it in soup. We make it as rice, um, you know, instead of rice, because we don't eat rice at Ashtafadi. Uh, but that's our matzah. So everything was homemade, everything was handmade, never we used to buy anything, we never bought cheeses, we never had cheese in Pesach. Lebne, nothing, nothing, none, none of this. We used to have breakfast eggs and eggs and eggs for breakfast for these eight days. No cheeses at all. There wasn't kasher le Pesach, not like now today. Uh, some of the food... Uh... Uh, is something we don't have today. I remember these, uh, and I guess some other people maybe from Iraq have it, the very thin matzos, like uh, uh, like when, when they do beklava, the, the, and then they would do layers of those things with meat in between and put it in the oven, and it was like a, a big pie. I remember that. And also remember the breakfast where we would have uh, uh, cheese between matzos that are dipped in egg and then fried and it was delicious and I still do that. Uh, mm. my, my children and grandchildren love it. So the mimona was this table with um, a dish with flour and eggs, I think five eggs and um, broad beans, I think seven broad beans sticking into the flour, a coin for money, and then a dish with uh, honey and a dish with, uh, with um, milk, milk, milk and honey. And I remember my mother from um, early afternoon, just before the end of Pesa, she would get from her maid, we go and get some flour and she will bake this sort of uh, terrid, which is which are also called mufletas, which are sort of pancakes. So you you would lay the table with the terrid, with you would put on one corner a big bowl of flour and eggs and oil. And again here, this is again all symbolic. They brought from the fields some uh, wheat. You know the the actual wheat cut from the field. Okay. It was spread on the table to adorn it, really. We didn't eat it. And the fish, always fish, F fertility and whatever. I in some families, they dip their fingers in the flour and they put them on the head. But my parents, I don't remember doing that. What I do remember is that we had lem um, the maror, which was lettuce, dipped in honey, not salt water, so that we would have <laughs> a sweet year. Mm -hmm. You know, for eight days you don't eat flowers, so then you want to welcome back, uh, welcome again the, the flowers. So that was, that is actually the only evening where you sat at the table only with sweet things. So you had lots of cakes and biscuits. And at uh, the time when we used to live in Tangiers, we lived in a block of flat and we would go to, from neighbors to neighbors. So it was great because we would go and eat a bit here and then suddenly we would stay maybe half an hour, an hour, and then we would go to some other friend downstairs on the third floor and then it was the second <laughs> floor and then people coming to us. It was, it was really quite entertaining and quite fun. Mm -hmm.